So we ended the last video by downloading the classifier model. Now we need to create an application server that can use that model and serve an API from it. So I'm going to make a new directory called server and I'm going to CD into it. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to create a virtual environment for the project. So in Python virtual environments are just ways that when you install libraries, you're only installing them local to the individual project you're working on and not reading from any global libraries. So I'm going to use VN for that and make my app env. And then I'm going to activate that virtual environment by doing source my app and slash bin slash activate. So now I'm in that virtual environment. I need to create two files, one called requirements.txt and one called server.py. Now the requirements.txt file is just going to be any uh, external libraries that we want to install. And I'm going to install four separate ones. One is going to be Flask, which is the lightweight Python application server that we're going to use. One is going to be FastAI, which we're going to use to um, read the model from that .pkl file and actually use the classifier. Um, yeah, and then Py, uh, FastAI depends on two libraries. One is called Torch, which is the PyTorch library, which we want greater than 1.4. And another one is called Torch Vision, which we want the version to be greater than 0 0.5.0. So yeah, I'm going to install these by doing pip3 install-r requirements txt. And yeah, I'm going to let these install and it's going to take a couple minutes. So I will see you when it uh, finishes. Okay, now that those libraries are finished installing, we can create our server, which is going to be a very simple Flask app. So from Flask, import Flask with a capital F. Um, and then we're going to set a variable called app equal to Flask double underscore name. And then we're going to say at app dot route, uh, just the slash route for the home page. And we'll say def home. And this is just going to be a very quick example to return hello world just to make sure that it's working. Um, yeah, and then the one thing we need to do is say if double underscore name is equal to double underscore main, then we want to app dot run uh, host. We want to be localhost, so we'll set it to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. The port we're going to set to 8000, and we'll set debug mode to true so that we auto reload the server when we change the code. And then to run it, we're just going to run this command python3 server.py. It says that it's starting a server on port 8000. And if we go to localhost 8000, we see that we do get hello world. And if we were to change it to like three underscores, we'll see that it does reload the server in the um, console. And then if we reloaded this page, it would automatically reload. So now um, what we actually want to do is we want to get this um, server to make a route that is like slash classify and we're going to post an image to this route and we want it to return the actual predictions um, so let's just take this one step at a time and let's just make this a simple get request just to see if we can get the workflow of loading our model and actually making prediction working so i'm just going to say def classify uh, is going to return um, a json object of brand predictions and this will just be an empty array for now so if we went to localhost 8000 slash classify we'll see that it does give us just this empty brand predictions. Okay, so the first things first is it would be great if we could just take a static um, image on our local uh, like file system and use that to make a prediction just to see if we can get the workflow of loading the model working. So let's go to Chrono24 and let's get any image of a watch. Uh, I'm wearing a Seiko Monster on my wrist right now, which is the greatest watch ever created. So I think let's try to find one of those. Seiko Monster. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm just going to pick this one. Uh, let's see if we can grab the uh, image URL of it. Um, let's see, div content, and here's the URL. So on our thing, we can just do uh, wget dash o um, seiko monster dot jpeg, and then the link to it, and then we'll restart that server. Yeah, and now we have the seiko monster local on our file system. So first thing that we need to do is we need to import the FastAI vision library. So I'm going to do import fastai.vision as fastai. Um, yeah, and then we need to just set a global variable um, or like a constant to our classifier. So I'm going to say classifier is equal to fastai.loadlearner, which is the command for loading a learner from that .pkl file. And we'll say um, where this lives relative on our file system, which is going to be dot dot slash models comma classifier.pkl, which is the name of the uh, actual model. Yeah, so then we can say um, image is equal to fastai.image.openImage, and we again give it like the relative path, which is going to be dot slash seiko monster.jpg. 
And then we want to say a prediction is going to be equal to classifier.predict image. And of course, when we're doing this, we actually want this image to be posted from a user interface, not just read locally off the file system, but let's just see if we can get this to work. So I'm going to just try to print the prediction. Um, yeah, and then let's go um, back to our localhost 8000 and let's just like make a request. And you can see we actually do get the prediction, right? Category Seiko. Um, and then these are the uh, like uh, confidences of each brand. Now, we don't want to return this data structure from the API. Um, we probably want to return something that looks more like this, where we have an array. And then each item in the array is a two tuple of like the brand Seiko and then the confidence of it, like let's say like point. 089 or something, right? And then we just have a two tuple of every brand and then the confidence all the way down. Um, in fact, like this object right here, that's this Python fast AI object, wouldn't even serialize into JSON anyway, because like what is a category Seiko? That's not going to easily translate to a JavaScript data structure. In, like a tensor, JavaScript doesn't really even know what to do with this either. So we need to do some manipulation on this data structure to get it into the right format. So if we go here, um, instead of printing the prediction, we know that um, prediction index two is that tensor list of the confidence of each brand. So if we wanted to just um, map those into floats so that we don't have to deal with tensors, we can map float prediction two. Um, and then we can just round all those numbers to get rid of the decimal places. And let's just round them all to like, let's say like four decimal places. So round x comma four, four x in map float this is something called a list comprehension in python which i actually think is kind of cool they don't really have this in other programming languages and these are all the confidences but we need to zip this together with the actual names of the brands which we know is in that classifier.data.classes variable from the python notebook so we can take this and this is going to start to get kind of long um, so maybe we should break it up on lines but we can zip this uh data with the um, classifier.data.classes. So zip classifier.data.classes uh, with this. And, and then we need to um, just wrap this whole thing in a list because Python doesn't actually serialize this zip object unless you make it explicit that it's supposed to be a list beforehand. But yeah, we'll see that this actually does give us the um, brands and the confidences. But the other thing is that I think that we should probably want to sort these so that the thing that it's the most confident about is at the top of the list. So we'd want to sort this list also. So I'm just going to wrap this whole thing in a Python function called sorted. And this is, you know, getting to be kind of uh, obnoxious to look at, but I'll do my best to just like keep it kind of clean uh, list. Uh, yeah. And then sorted here. Yeah, and then we're going to need to um, put a comma at this entire thing here and say uh, key equals lambda p p1, which is the function that will sort it by the um, value, like the highest value first and say like reverse equals true. So if we do this, we'll see that um, we actually do get the brand predictions in the right format where it's predicting um, the brand by the most confident. And this is what we want our API to return. It looks a little bit messy, but this is actually all that we need from our web server um, to actually serve this API for now. But obviously, like we're just making a GET request to this classify route, and then we're reading a local file off our file system. Really, we want to make a POST request to this route from a UI. Um, and I think that we should build the simple UI workflow right now. And then uh, we'll make the actual POST request, come back to the server, make it handle it correctly, deploy the entire thing, and have a working machine learning workflow in production. So we'll do that in the next video.